Hey everyone, welcome to KQ. I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. And we're the Kitchen Queers coming to you from our house in San Francisco, California, where it is sunny and clear outside. But cold. Yeah, it's a bit on the chilly side. So for us, chilly is like, you know, 54 degrees. It's probably a lot chillier where you are if you're on the East Coast. Here under the lights, it's quite warm. It's quite <laughs> a bit warmer. So anyway, what we're going to do today, let's come over here to our banner section and we're gonna switch this out. And today we are going to be making parsley pesto. Woo, 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 woo. And as you can see, we're already drinking. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers. everyone. And now what is this that we're drinking? Mm. A high tide. Mm -hmm. Our cocktail of the week this mm. week is a high tide cocktail, mm. hello. And we will tell you exactly how to make this drink before this broadcast ends. So let's check in with the chat room really quick. I wanna say hi to Flour, Eggs and Yeast. Hey, Cam and Teresa, great to see you. Thank you for joi joining us this afternoon. And Tom's Food Factory's here. Hi, Tom, great to see you. And our good friend Terry's here. Hey, Terry, we're, welcome to the show. And Yuzu, Chef Yuzu is here. Hey, great to see you, Chef Yuzu. So nice of you to join us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. So if you missed the first few seconds of our live stream, what we're gonna to do today is Philip is going to show us how to use fresh parsley to make parsley pesto. When you've got all that parsley growing in your garden, what do you do with it? Well, show us all that parsley. Well, this two cups, that. And this is what you started out with. It looked like that. Parsley branches like and this. See here. Build up this. Okay, so you've. you've this was. Full of parsley. And then you trimmed all this trimmed down, down to, to this. So this is what it looked like when we picked it from our herb garden, which is out on our balcony. You may have seen a picture of this parsley this morning on our Instagram feed. This is just curly leaf parsley. You can use flat leaf parsley if that's what you have growing in your garden. And this is a great way if you have a ton of herbs and you're not sure how to use them all. This is an excellent way to use up a lot of parsley really fast. So. Um, we're drinking, let's see, for those of you who missed out on what we're drinking today, our cocktail of the week is the High Tide Cocktail. Hello. And of course, it's this lovely, fabulous, festive green color because, you know, tomorrow's St. Patrick's hey. Day. And so, you know, green is the color right now. So let's check in with the chat again and make sure we said hi to everyone. Great to see you all. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate you being here. So um, Tom is asking, isn't pesto made from basil? Um, usually, usually, but not always. <laughs> sometimes it's made from cilantro. Sometimes it's made from parsley. This is curly leaf parsley, like we said. You could use Italian flat leaf parsley. Some people think well. Italian parsley gets more flavor, but we had this. We this, had a lot of it. So. A lot of it. <laughs> you don't want to waste it. So I see Suburban Barbecue has joined us. Hi, Jim. Thanks for coming to check out our broadcast this afternoon. We really appreciate you being here. So we're making parsley pesto, and we'll show you how to make this high tide cocktail. This is really yummy. And of course, as you can see, it has this lovely green color. Mm. Oh. oh my gosh, these are good. So we will get to this before too long. We'll tell you exactly how to make this. And just so you know, the uh, ingredients for all the things that we're making today, the cocktail and the parsley pesto are located in the description right below where you're watching this live stream. So you can just scroll down and copy and paste those into your digital recipe book so you can try these at home for yourself. So let me say hello to Braden has joined us in the chat. Hi, Braden, great to see you. And Ginger Snap Kitchen is here. Hey, great to see you too. Thank you for joining us. And the Dude's Kitchen and Grill. Hey, Mike, great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us today. And yes, happy St. Patrick's Day a day early. Sure. We are all dressed in green Morning. and we're drinking green cocktails and we're making green parsley pesto. So we have definitely got a whole green theme thing yeah. going on here this afternoon. No eggs or ham, sorry. Uh, no, we're just doing <laughs> green. <laughs> so let's see. I want to check in really quick. I think we said hello to everyone who's joined us in the chat room, and we really appreciate you all being here this afternoon. So let's talk about parsley pesto. And how is it that you came up with the parsley pesto idea? Where well, we had a lot of parsley. And so I just Googled what you do with extra parsley. And so someone suggested make pesto. And then I look up parsley pesto recipes and there was a time of it's like, okay, this is something people do. So we tried it and um, we liked it. 
<laughs> well, we tried, we tried like what we often do. We tried a recipe that we found and then we tweaked it yeah. to suit our personal taste. Because this has been modified quite a bit from the original recipe you started with. Because we, like we often do, we, uh, we rarely make a brand new recipe that we've never tried on our show. We sort of operate out of the same belief system as you never try out anything new when you're having guests. You always want to make something, you know you can nail it. So the guests go home happy and nobody has to stop at McDonald's drive through on the way home. So parsley pesto. Now we're using fresh parsley from our garden, but you can use parsley from the grocery store. You can use, uh, we, but we have to have fresh parsley. It's, fresh. it's gotta be fresh in you order to make pesto. Powder, can't, use dried parsley. can't use dried parsley. I, mean, I guess. Well, I mean, you it would know, be an experiment. No. We could try it as an experiment sometime, but maybe not no, today. No, no, no. Today, we are going to be using fresh pesto. And I see Karen from In the Kitchen with Karen has joined us. Hi, Karen. Great to see you. Congratulations on your beautiful new house. Ooh. Her new kitchen. I showed you that picture. Oh, of her, yeah, kitchen. Right. her kitchen in her new house is gorgeous, and it's going to be an awesome set for your show, Karen. We can't wait to see you get moved into your new kitchen and see all the good stuff you're going to come up with in that gorgeous new space. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. And also, uh, congratulations to Karen. She just went over 2,000 subscribers. Wow. So bravo, 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 sister. So if you haven't checked out In the Kitchen with Karen, be sure and go check it out because it is getting popular very quickly. She's up to 2K subscribers. She'll be up to 10,000 subscribers in yeah. no time at all. Probably you know sooner than Christmas. <laughs> Anyway, so thank you all. Oh, I see Bobby Joe, Ski Girly has joined us in the chat. Hi, so great to see you. We hope everything is well where you are. And just to let you know, we uh, made the cocktails we're already drinking. This is called a high tide cocktail using our brewmate cocktail shaker. This, we, we got this. This was gifted to us by the Mr. Homeowner Cooking and DIY channel from Rob and Bobby Joe. And we have used this every day since we got it. We love it. We love it. And we're definitely, they warned us that these were addictive and they're right. We're going to wind up with 10 of these because we like a lot of the different finishes that these come in. And anyway, we'll talk more about this cocktail shaker when we mix another round of these before this broadcast is over. We'll show you exactly how to make this lovely green cocktail. It's called the High Tide. It's very yummy. And we'll get to that before the broadcast ends. Okay. But to start out with, we're going to be doing the parsley pesto. Let me really quick say hello to Mr. Homeowner. Rob, great to see you. Thank you for coming out to join us this afternoon. And Everything Shakes is in the house. Hey, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. And Mrs. Sonia Elaine. Hi, Sonia. Ooh. Great to see you. She's in the house. She's on the treadmill watching. Uh, she right. must be watching on her tablet or on her phone. I, th I think she's been on... She's watched our show before from her treadmill. And so props to you for getting on the treadmill because we have a treadmill thingy and it just sits in the other room and we never get on it. So <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining us. And Mona's in the house. Hey, Mona, great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us. It's great to see you this afternoon. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, we talked about that we're using parsley and we're using fresh curly leaf parsley, but you could use flat leaf parsley as well. Well, some people think flat leaf parsley has more cake flavor than curly leaf. We just happen to have curly leaf, so. That's what's growing in our herb garden now on so. our balcony. So that's what we're going to use. How Does it smell like yeah. really grassy? It smells like parsley. No, it smells like parsley. Yeah. It smells, yeah, it's got that familiar flavor. Back in the day uh, when I worked in a restaurant, you know, decades ago, there was always a little piece of parsley on the plate as a garnish. That's just all the plates went out with a piece of parsley on it. Almost all the plates came back with a piece of parsley on it because nobody ever ate it. <laughs> it just looked really pretty. But we're gonna, we're gonna show you how to use this pretty curly leaf parsley. I would now, actually. And, uh, and this gorgeous recipe. And just so you know, for those of you who joined late and didn't hear me babble about it before, the ingredients for the parsley pesto and the high tide cocktail that we're drinking are right down below in the description below where you're watching this broadcast. So we hope everyone's having a good time and thank you for joining us. Uh, I just wanna ask everyone, what does your picture quality look like if you're watching on a phone or if you're watching on a tablet versus if some of you are watching like on a desktop like what we have here. We're curious how the uh, picture quality is for you because it's the last couple of weeks we've had some experiences where sometimes our broadcast is really clear and sometimes it's really wonky and blurry and it doesn't, we've researched everything that we can. It doesn't seem to be anything that we're doing from our end 
or that we can necessarily control. So hopefully everything looks good to you guys. Uh, Flower, Eggs and Yeast, Tom and Cam said it looks 100% perfect. Okay. Uh, Bobby Joe says it's super clear and Sonia says it's super clear. So hooray, Yay. let's get going while, this, while the signal really? is nice and clear. Let's get going. Thank you all for telling us about that. We appreciate it. So we're gonna speech there, there go. this. Uh, we've got the Cuisinart food processor out here and it's outfitted with the standard blade that goes down inside of the vessel. So why don't we just, here, show you. yeah, uh, there we go. That one. So we're just popping that right in there. Point. And what we're going to do next is I'm going to switch over here to uh, the split screen so you can see a close up and then we'll see how that looks. I want to get this banner off of here so we don't block our viewpoint. So there we go. That's our close up shot. That looks pretty good. Can yeah. you, can you reach yeah. the buttons and mm -hmm. everything that you need to do? Okay. So we want to make sure that you guys can get a good look at the action that's going on here. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, I see everyone's playing nicely in the chat room and we really appreciate that. Rob says the picture is as clear as vodka. So yes. that's awesome. We, we asked, uh, we do have the cooperation of everyone else in our house today. They've turned off all their digital devices so we cannot have some other thing sucking up our bandwidth and our upload ability. So hopefully that'll last for the duration of the broadcast. Thank you, Mona. She says she's loving the green. Everything's green. Our outfits, our cocktails, and even what we're making to eat, everything is green today. So now you've got the food processor set up with the standard blade yep. and you've already prepped this parsley. Yep. And let me get it again and show it for the people who didn't nip, see. Nip, 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 nip. Took a while. This, these were the branches of parsley that came off the plant that's in a container on our balcony outside. You try to keep as mess, little stem as possible in this. Right. So you cut this, you cut off just the leaf part and as discarded like all the stem. A little bit of stem here, but you know, just tiny little bit. But it's 95% yeah. lovely little leaf part. And it's packed in here, two cups. Okay. So there's two cups of packed fresh parsley. Packed parsley. And then what's the first thing that we're going to do here in the food processor? Well, we're going to put the parsley in. Okay. Let's go for it. Oh, come on. It is back in there. There we go. Yeah. Well, it said packed and you packed it. Well, that is definitely packed. Yeah. There's a lot of parsley going on here. So this is a great way if you have an herb garden and it gets a little overgrown, yeah. this is an excellent way to use some of that product. So are we done with this now? Yeah. Let me get this out of your way. But it was on our parsley. Okay. And what do we put in next? Oh, it's the store of walnuts. The walnuts. We're going in with the walnuts. I put the walnuts. Um, lots of times people make pesto with, what are they called? Pine nuts. Pine nuts. But this recipe called walnuts, I like walnuts and I tried it. So we're using walnuts today. Walnuts? Hey, Sunset's in the house. Great to see you, Sunset. Sunset is playing with the kittens while oh, watching our show. Yeah. That sounds awesome. We were playing with the kittens, well, our cats, earlier, actually, before we came upstairs to get set up for this broadcast. So we've got the parsley in and the walnuts, walnuts. in. What happens after that? Garlic. Okay, so you've got these. Well, it's four cloves. That should be, but there's little ones because one of the cloves was, you know, one of those things where it's all a little bit pretty pieces. So one, two, okay. three, four cloves of garlic. Okay, and you peeled that and then you peeled cut off the root the middle, Yeah. Okay, so these are prepped garlic cloves, but you don't need to like put this through the garlic press ahead. It'll nah, get blended yeah, up oh, yeah. in the food processor. Okay, Look. so next goes the garlic. Let me have your empty bowl. Okay. Now I'll take those off. Your Thank Boing. you, sir. Okay, so what do we put in next? Next is Parmesan cheese. This is grated. Just make it blend nicer. I used um, shredded one time and it worked okay. But the grated is better just because it's already browned up. It just mixes in with everything else a lot more easily when you use grated. That? Okay, so we're done with that now. Last but not least, just a little bit of salt and pepper. Which is a there's a quarter teaspoon of salt and eighth teaspoon of pepper. So it doesn't take much seasoning. No, just a little bit. Okay, and that's okay. that for now. Okay, so the only other ingredient is the olive oil, but that comes a little bit later. Yeah. Okay, so what's the next thing that we have to do? We're gonna run the food processor. So uh, Dude's Kitchen and Grill says, just say no to pine nuts. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so just, okay, if you guys are wearing a headset, or you're somewhere where you don't want to make a loud noise, we're going to have to turn the food processor on now. So you might want to turn the volume down or take your earplugs out or your eye, eye buds, whatever those thingies are called. So we're going to run the food Air processor. Pot. So fair warning, food processor, 
Noise alert, okay. noise alert. Okay, Here okay. We go. go for it. Get it all round up to make the incision recipe to make it look like a paste. Okay, so we're gonna keep on going because it's not quite there. Okay. I think we're good. Look at there. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Sunset is asking if we have a garlic press in our Amazon storefront. The answer to that is no, not yet, but we can add one if you want to know which one that we usually use when we're not uh, crushing the garlic right in the food processor. We have an OXO one, and that works really well. We've had it actually for years. Those things hold up really well. And I see Jeff from Wine and Dine with Jeff has joined us in the house. Hey, Jeff, great to see you. Jeff's latest video, which came out this morning, features a classic dirty rice recipe, and Ooh. it looks so supremely delicious. Even the dirty rice not I know. We used to make dirty rice all the time. We haven't been eating rice as often because we've been trying to cut down on carbohydrates as much as we can, but uh, we've made a rice dish with cauliflower rice, but his dirty rice recipe looked awesome. So kudos to you, Jeff. Your food always looks gorgeous. So now we've got all of those ingredients Blend it up to what looks sort of paste like. Pasty like. like. Yeah, it's all ground up. Nice. Then we slowly What's add next? the olive oil. That's okay. it. So, so we slowly add the olive oil while on. it's on. No, on. On. Okay. And then so we're just going to slowly pour in the olive oil. awesome now can we take this off yeah. and just tip it up slightly so our yeah. guests can see that's what we're talking about so this is the this is exactly what we're going for it's it's sort of paste like it's not super liquidy at all no. it's very nicely I, I would call it coarsely blended together oh, there's a little bit here though a bit well we can get we can You're take gonna, that out no we're just gonna we're gonna too late it won't go back down. No, nah, never mind. Oh, well, that's okay. We're done. Okay, so we're going to push that aside and unplug it. Pardon me for reaching in front of you. And we're going to get rid of this. Okay, so now okay. we're going to take some of this and we're going to spoon it out into a pretty bowl so we can show you a beauty shot of this lovely food. Thank you, Sunset. She says it's gorgeous. And I see uh, the other side of the stove, Chef Alexis is in the house. Hey, Chef Alexis, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate that. It's great to see you today. And uh, oh, Four Seasons Barbecue is in the house. Great Yay. to see you. Thank you for joining us today. We really yeah. appreciate it. Green on green. There we go. Green parsley pesto and a lovely green fiesta okay. bowl. So the first thing. Put this so we're gonna stash that. So this is what we're this is what we've got here, peeps. Let me get this over closer to the camera. We've got this lovely parsley pesto, and Jeff is asking what we're going to put the pesto on. I'm glad you asked that question. Great question, Jeff. We're gonna tell you right now. We've actually got start, a couple of things that we're gonna do. By making some toast with some bread. Okay, so come over here and show us that. You made a loaf of French bread. This is French bread from it's the Pillsbury Two, two Bread. Dough. Yeah. So we made this we loaf and you cut a few slices yeah. 
and now you're going to pop these in June them. and yeah. toast them. Yeah. Okay, so Rob from he's Rob from uh, Mr. Homeowner Cooking and DIY is always asking about the June oven. The June oven is actually right over here when we have it in the kitchen, and we're going to use the toast feature and toast this French bread, and then Philip's going to top it with some of this lovely pesto. And we're also going to show you a dinner idea to use this pesto for as well that includes pasta and chicken, and that'll be coming up as soon as we get this toast going on. So Philip's setting up the oven to start toasting. And there we go. Okay. It'll just take a few minutes. So while that's toasting, let me run through the chat here. I think I missed a few people on the way in. Uh, let's see. Oh, Janine's here. Hey, Janine. Great to see you. Thank you for joining us. And Terry from Four Seasons. I think I might have said that before. Hi, Terry. Great to see you. We appreciate you being here. So let's see. Um, I believe we've said hello to just about everyone. So uh, now what's the next thing that we're going to start preparing? Uh, well, let's, I think we'll do the uh, pasta and chicken. Okay, so we're going to do, uh, we already have some pasta that Philip made earlier today and some chicken that he actually cooked last night. And the chicken that you made is actually um, chicken breasts and you just cut them up in small cubes. And like, then yeah, what like, like cubed chicken breasts and then I marinate with olive oil and balsamic vinegar and salt and pepper and garlic powder and onion powder. Okay. After two days. And then you. And then I just fry in a pan. Okay, so fry by saute. frying in saute. Okay. <laughs> so we've got these lovely little chicken cubes. Let's show everyone what the chicken cubes look like. Let me put this. Let me put a close-up cam thing going up. There we go. Okay, so it's just, just tiny. Chop a piece of chicken. They're not tiny. They're small chunks of chicken, and this is all cooked up. And so all we have to do is reheat. It comes out really tender this way. So it does. Yeah. Okay. So we've also got some farfalle, also known as bow tie pasta. Bow tie. So we're going to be using bow tie pasta for this dish today. Oh, dear. I messed up someone's name. I called someone Terry when their name is Ron. Uh -oh. I'm so sorry. I actually have been practicing making sure I knew everyone's names and whose name goes with which channel. And, you know, I'm just going to blame it on a senior moment thing because, you know, I'm, I'm pushing the big 6-0 here, peeps. My birthday is coming up this summer. So we're going to have to have a celebration for that because you don't turn 60 every day. So anyway, sorry about that. I will try to remember from now on, Ron. I really appreciate you being here. So thank you so much for joining us. We are so glad to see your name come across our screen. So, okay, yes, a happy sound like frying bacon. I agree. Oh, yeah. Speaking <laughs> of bacon. Yes, we have some lardon that's already made. We're going to put on the toast. It's going to be topping for the toast mm -hmm. along with the pesto. And so what Philip has done, let me show you at the close-up cam. He's just put some of the already pre-cooked farfalle and the pre-cooked chunks of chicken breast in a microwave-safe glass bowl. And now we're going to heat this up. Are we ready yet, or we're going to wait? Uh, let's wait till the toast is done. Okay, we're going to wait till the toast is done so we can serve yeah. everything together in one fell swoop. Uh, Jim from Suburban says, 60 is the new 30. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> the best thing about getting older, though, is senior citizen discounts. You get to go to the grocery store early in the morning before everyone else. Uh, if you're old enough, you can get out of jury duty if you want to. Social Security, hello, kicks in. <laughs> Social Security, oh my gosh, Social Security. Hey, VA Chick Off-Road and Cooking is in the house. Mm -hmm. Hey, great to see you. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate you being here. And mm -hmm. let's see. Okay, so now what we've got going on is the pesto is actually all done. And as you saw, I mean, we're only 20-something minutes into the show, and it's already all done. That's how easy it is to put this parsley pesto it together. It took longer to trim the parsley than it did to make the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, preparing the fresh parsley it was, you know, it took quite a while because Philip trimmed off all the leaves and then discarded all the stems. And so that was a bit of work because we wound, we needed two cups of prepared parsley leaves. So it took quite a bit of parsley to make that happen. Yeah. That's why this is a good idea. If your herb garden is overgrown, you can put your parsley to work this way very easily. Yes, I think we should have a martini celebration, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll do – Philip's birthday is coming up. My birthday is coming up, so we'll maybe we'll put them together and do a birthday blowout show, and we'll just make tons of cocktails all night long. So uh, let's see. 
I believe I said hello to everyone who's in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, so you're going to need that. Is it? Are they done? There we go. Okay. So the toast is ready to come out of the oven. And then Philip's going to show you what he's going to do with these little... They're, they're like crostini sized pieces yeah. of toast. That's what I would call it. Yeah, it's a crostini. crostini. That's what I'm going for. Okay. So. Let's bring this over here. I'm going to switch back so you see the split screen again, so you can see a close-up of the crostini. Just, you know, lightly toasted. Just lightly toasted. So now what are we going to do with that next? We're going to spread it with some pesto. Like. So. Ooh, that spreads really nicely. Yeah. Here, let's, I want to move this so people can see you Perfect. spread it. Can we spread this one yeah, so they sure. can see you doing that? So. Daddy Dutch Barbecue's in the house. Hey. Hi, Kent. Great to see you, Kent. Thank you for coming to join us today. Just a thin layer. Okay. That looks really super yummy. And the color is so yeah. intensely green. This looks really, really good. Sunset says they made a zero carb fudge. Ooh, so they must have used some sort of sugar substitute, right? Because yeah, to get the that's because that's where the carbs come from, and fudge <laughs> is from the sugar. So you could use monk fruit. I'm very curious. <laughs> Sundays with heart says that the pesto matches our shirts. That was the we, point. <laughs> we were going for a whole green motif today, Leanne. Okay, so we've got well, pesto slathered Christine. Those look really yummy. Then just because, you know, bacon makes everything better. Bacon. Yay, this is my favorite part. So you just cut up pieces of bacon and then fried them in a pan on top yeah. of the stove. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's why it's called lardon. Doesn't cocoa have carbs? You know, I'm not sure about the answer to that. I'm cocoa a, powder? Cocoa powder. Yeah, Sunset says uh, erythritol, which is monk fruit. So that's oh, the sweetener, cool. and that's how you get the carbs down is by okay. using a sugar substitute. And actually, monk fruit tastes really good, and it's very sweet without having that aftertaste that artificial sweeteners sometimes have. And VA Chick says it looks really yummy, and she loves bacon. We agree. We love bacon, too. So let's pop this baby right up here where everyone can see it really good. There we go. Those look supremely good. How soon before we get to Let's eat, eat them? Yeah, okay, right. we're gonna try these little yeah, babies right. so we can taste the pesto yeah. on a crostini. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Mmm. Mmm. This oh, is yeah. really good. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh my gosh, this is so good. You get the herbaceousness from the parsley, from the garlic, from the cheese. Uh, the cheese has more saltiness. The garlic has a nice tang. It's very garlic the, forward uh, in a good way. A good, nice sort of a base note. I love it. Mm. The garlic is really nice. It's you know got a, a nice salt element from the parmesan, mm. and of course from these lovely little bacon lardon pieces on top. But this is a lovely little appetizer. This is great, <laughs> and <laughs> it was so so easy. Now, if you're cutting down carbs like we pretend we are, you could also spread this on some of those uh, low-carb, like, um, uh, fathead dough muffins oh, yeah. that we made a while back. Those were really good. So you could get out of the carbs. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. 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 Oh, my gosh, these are good. Janine says... Cabernet with the pesto toast. Mm. Yeah, a really good, rich red mm. wine would be awesome mm. with this dish. Mm. Mm. Pardon me, I'm going to get a paper towel. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. That is so, so yummy. I really like how um, nice and garlicky and unctuous it is. The texture is lovely. Mm. And you get that nice freshness from the parsley, but it doesn't taste like lawn clippings. Sometimes parsley can go really grassy. This doesn't taste like that at all. No. Yeah, it smells good. Okay. Okay. So 
Uh, Coke, OC, Sundays with Tart says Cocoa solids have 3.1 carbs per tablespoon. So that's not bad, is it? I don't is know. It? I don't really know. <laughs> You know, I've seen some people on these low. keto food plans. We have an acquaintance that's doing the keto plan, and they only allow themselves seven carbs a day. So that's like minuscule. You know, you could take one bite out of the bread, and then that's all you can eat I the can't rest of the day. Bread, sorry. So, you Cookies, know, cake, pie. Yeah, we try to do a low carb thing once in a while, but not always. So, anyway, now what's going on next year <laughs> is you've got. Pasta, farfalle, bow tie pasta that was already cooked. And Philip put some chunks of chicken breast that are also already mm. cooked in a bowl. What are you going to do? Let me go heat it up first. And, and then, then put yeah. that on after? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So Philip's going to microwave the pasta and the chicken to warm it up again because it was already all pre cooked. So. Uh, oh, you're just too kind, Mona. Mona says 60. You're looking. Fab, Sean Connery, fabulous. I would consider that an extreme compliment because Sean Connery is like, ooh, yeah. Uh, Maybe. I, I mean, Sean Connery, James Brolin, Sam Elliott. Oh, God. Okay. If I can look half as good as those guys, the, uh, James Brolin just turned 80. So he's old enough to be my dad. If I can look as good as him if I live another 20 years, I'll be so, so happy because he is so handsome. Okay, so thank you, Mona, for that kind compliment. And VA Chick wants to know what's in the drink. We're going to show you how to make this, and his is almost gone. Let uh, me speed it along. Actually, just really quickly, it's rum, coconut rum. Mm. There's some Midori, some blue curacao, and some pineapple juice. But the key to making this is this is sort of a show cocktail, and you'll see why when we make one in just a few minutes. Because you layer the ingredients, and then they run through each other, and that's what creates this lovely deep green color. So this is actually a fun one. It's the kind of cocktail that you want to make sure if you're serving guests that you make it in front of them so they can see the process unfold because that's really the big part of the fun other than drinking it. And, of course, you know, pineapple juice and coconut rum. Oh, my gosh, what's not to like about that? That combination is a classic, and it tastes really, really good. Plus, if you need another green cocktail, because last week we gave you seven, if that's not enough, yeah. <laughs> this will be eight. And this tastes really good, and it's super easy to make, and all the ingredients are things you can find at the grocery store. So we will be showing you exactly how to put this together and how to layer the ingredients to get this cool green cocktail. As soon as we get done putting the dinner plate together with our pesto and pasta and chicken. So let me make sure I believe I said hello to everyone. If I missed you, just know that we appreciate you being here. And we do go back actually and rewatch the broadcast to see how we did. And I always check the chat along the way to make sure that I can say hi to people that I might not have seen uh, during the show. And also we love to check on other people's channels as well and see what you guys are up to cooking. So thank you so much, Janine. She says, you both look great. I'm hooked on Mitch and Philip. Well, hooray! Yay, thank you, Janine. We appreciate your continued support. And I say that all the time, but actually we're, we're really excited that we've had so much love from the community and the foodie people on YouTube and all the people that love to do chats and live streams and participate in that. And so we really, really enjoy doing these live streams because we get instant feedback and we can tweak things as we go along. And then if people have questions, we can do our best to answer them. So thank you so much for participating, Janine. We really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Okay. I think we're getting caught up on the chat. Steven and Jacqueline are in the house. Hey, great to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. So what has just popped out of the microwave is some farfalle, which is also known as butterfly pasta. And oh, some... Bow tie pasta, excuse me, butterfly pasta. I was thinking butterfly Bow tie thing. pasta. Yeah, they sure, sure do look know. like little butterflies. And then some chicken that was already cooked in advance, and so you just heated it up. Yeah. And so yeah. the next thing that we want to do is I've got a lovely green. This All is right. shamrock green, just so you know. This color is called shamrock. This is some <laughs> uh, dish, a bowl, actually, from our Fiesta collection. So what we're going to do is we're going to just put this in yeah. here. Yeah. So we're going to transfer it. You can microwave these Fiesta bowls, but we've decided not to put our Fiesta in the microwave because we've noticed that sometimes when you microwave China, it can make the dishes more brittle and more susceptible to breaking. 
So we microwave in glass bowls and then transfer things to the china. So now we're going to plop on some of the pesto. And then just stir it up. And the warmth of the pasta and the chicken will help the pesto sort of adhere to all of the goodies and get into the nooks and crannies of those bow ties. Coat everything. Yes. You want to get it really nicely coated so everything has a nice green tint to it. Sorry, that looks fingers. delicious. I think that's just a bit. I think that looks really good. Now I'm going to have to get an Instagram picture because people are going to be asking about how our food came out. So let me get an Instagram Wait a minute, picture. Let me clean the bowl up. Please. Yes, I will let you clean the bowl up, and then we'll okay. like garnish it with this on the side yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay. That that's looks good. really good. Okay, so we need a paper towel to clean off the edge of the bowl. Yeah. Okay. And your fingers. So this is something that you see often in restaurants. They plate stuff, and then there's someone, usually the expediter, uh, before the waiters or waitresses or the servers take things out to the dining room. They always clean off the rims of the plates, and that's basically what we're doing right here. It's just cleaning off. You get unchopped a lot. You know, yes. Presentation is part of the score. It is, and on here, yeah, presentation. Okay. So let's push this up a little closer to the front so everyone can see how that looks. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now let me get a picture of this. Oh, that does look good. Let's let's twist this around. Let's go this way. There we go. That looks awesome. Oops. Uh-oh. Oh, my phone did something that I didn't know what it was doing. You know, I need an 11-year-old. If anybody has a grandchild they can send over, can help me learn how to use my phone. We just okay. got a new phone. So we're still figuring out what to do. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. Let me give you a full shot of this lovely food. So there we have it. Chicken, pasta, and parsley pesto served with a pesto crostini topped with bacon. Sounds good to me. So let's check this out. Let's make let's get over here on a split screen. In fact, let's go over here to the full screen. Okay, so let's give this a taste. I want to get a little bit of chicken pasta. and a little piece of pasta. Okay. Cheers. So we're going to give this a taste. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Really, really good. That is such a simple mm. pesto, but it is so flavorful. And your chicken was already really flavorful, but this adds a really nice touch to it. I'm digging this. Yeah, but, um, this is really good. I know pesto is usually made with basil, but basil is difficult. Ah. Even when you grow your own, it looks great. For a minute. You touch it and it bruises. Yeah. <laughs> it's really delicate stuff. And if you need a lot of basil mm. to make, well, you need a lot of basil to make pesto. And that's the problem that buying basil at the grocery store, you usually only get a couple of twigs of it and you're going to need 50 of those. So it's a little cost prohibitive. But that, using the parsley, this is so delicious. I think if you serve this to people, it doesn't taste like pesto with basil exactly, but it definitely tastes like pesto. So I think that this is something that would be, it's an excellent substitute if you can't get your hands on any basil. And parsley just, the curly, especially, sorry, um, mouthful. The curly parsley grows so fast. And so it easy. does. It grows so fast and we wind up with bucketfuls yeah. that we're not sure what to do with. And now we know what to do with it because this is an excellent result. I've used so. it as a pizza sauce. Oh, that, yes, that works really well. And uh, Sunset says this is a great way to perk up leftovers. Absolutely. Because mm. this, the pasta and the chicken were made ahead. And so that's definitely an easy way to spruce things up. And Jill is in the house from Yester Kitchen. Great to see you, Jill. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to see your avatar come across our screen. We've just finished. Uh, let me give you a, another close up shot of that food. Philip had already made chicken and pasta earlier, and we made this parsley pesto, which is this lovely, lovely green color, and it's very nice consistency. It's sort of paste-like, but oh my gosh, you can smell the parsley, you can smell the garlic. It is supremely delicious. The olive oil too. And it was lovely on these crostinis, and it's also really supremely delicious on the chicken and the pasta. I'm totally digging this. Yummy. Mm. Okay, so we promised we would show you how to make a cocktail, how to make the cocktail that we're drinking. So let me set this food aside. 
we're going to get back to this bowl full of food because it is so delicious. So let me get set up here really quick so we can make another one of these cocktails because Philip's Creek is all time. Hello. And one thing that we don't do in this house is empty cocktail glasses. So let me get this set up. I want to get it over here so you guys can see it. There we go. That's about somewhere in the middle, sort of. Okay, so what we want to do to start is fill your serving glass with ice cubes. Today we're using hurricane glasses. You could use a tumbler, you could use a highball, you could use a Collins glass, but you want something that's tall and big. And we also used smaller size ice cubes. Let me see if you can see these ice cubes. I'm gonna fish one out of your drink. We're using smaller size ice cubes because we find that when we're doing layering with the cocktail, smaller size ice cubes help fill up the space better and helps this, define the layers. This more. is our little uh, countertop ice maker. That's our countertop ice maker, and because that's the, where these little cubes came from. They look, to make an advice for us. Yeah, the, the ice cubes, they look like they're from a commercial venue because this is the kind of ice maker that a lot of small restaurants would have. So, hey, Mr. Blue is in the house. Mr. Blue, great to see you. You're just in time to check us out making a cocktail. Hello. So we've got our Brewmate cocktail shaker. Then we love this baby. Brewmate is available from brewmate.com, and you can also find these on Amazon. There's a link in, below in the description. In addition to the ingredients in these recipes, there's also a link where you can buy these Brewmate cocktail shakers. This thing is awesome. My favorite thing about it is that it doesn't get cold on the exterior because it's so well insulated. So and if you watched our other cocktail videos, you know I'm always saying that, oh, shake it until the cocktail shaker gets really cold. Well, that doesn't work with this because this doesn't ever get really cold because it's so well insulated. So we're gonna shake cocktails somewhere between six and eight seconds, maybe 10. So what we're gonna do is, let me give you, um, the ingredients for this drink are down below, but I'm gonna also tell you what they are as we make this drink unfold. We're going to need a uh, regular light rum, we're going to need some coconut rum. We're using Midori melon liqueur. I also have pineapple juice. I want to shake that up a little bit. This is just Dole 100% pineapple juice. And we also have some blue curacao. If you're not familiar with blue curacao, it's an orange flavored liqueur. It basically tastes like triple sec. It's just this lovely deep blue color. So what we want to do first is we're going to put some larger size ice cubes in the brewmate cocktail shaker. So let me go down here to the freezer. There we go. So I filled the cocktail shaker about, let's see, I want to get, there we go, about halfway full with ice cubes, like we usually do. So we've got that going on. I'm going to need the lid and the cap. So, first, what we're going to do is we're going to put an ounce of the rum, an ounce of the coconut rum, and an ounce of the Midori in the cocktail shaker over the ice cubes. So, let's do one ounce of rum, one ounce of coconut rum, and then one ounce of this lovely Midori melon liqueur. Okay, so that's the start of our drink. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is put the strainer and the cap on the shaker very securely. And one of my other favorite things about this brewmate, besides the fact that it doesn't get really cold on the outside, is that it does not leak. So I want to give this a really vigorous shake. I don't want to shake too hard because I don't want to mess up my hair. Anyway, okay, so we've got these ingredients well shaken in the brewmate, and now we're going to pour this over the ice. Okay, so that's the first step. This cocktail has a couple of different steps, and I'm going to show you all of them. So we're going to set that aside for the moment. Okay. And next, um, you can dump that out if you don't mind. Thank you. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add three ounces of pineapple juice. And these little cans of pineapple juice hold six ounces, so I'm gonna use half the can. And we're just gonna pour this right over the top. And you wanna pour it gently. There we go, that looks good. So you can see it's a little bit more green at the bottom than it is at the top where the pineapple juice is more concentrated. And now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to measure out an ounce of the blue curacao. So let me get this going on. And this is the part 
where the show starts. So this is where you want to have your guests making sure that they're paying attention because this is the fun part of this cocktail. So let's show in the close-up window. And then I'm just going to layer this blue right over the top. Mm -hmm. And now what's going to happen is the blue Curacao is going to run through the drink. And when it mixes with the pineapple juice and Midori, that's when it turns this lovely green color. Now you can stir this up if you want to, or you can serve it with the straw and let your guests stir it up themselves. We garnished these today with a maraschino cherry like we often do, because that's really easy. You could also use you know, citrus wheels if you want. You could use a pineapple wedge if you have access to some fresh pineapple that would look lovely as well as taste really good. Or dry pineapple. Yeah, even a dehydrated piece of pineapple. We use dehydrated citrus all the time. We're gonna have to dehydrate some pineapple and try that out as well. So whatever works for you, you could use pineapple from a can. That's okay, whatever you can get your hands on. And if you're not crazy about cocktail garnishes, you can just leave it plain like this. We like to serve these drinks in hurricane glasses with a straw. Thank you, Yuzu. Yuzu says, I'm paying attention now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, and that's what happens. And as you see, we haven't even stirred it, but the blue curacao seeped through the entire drink. And now we have this lovely green color that gets a little deeper and darker as it gets towards the bottom of the glass. I'm not sure you can see this, but one thing we like about these ice cubes is they're hollow. And if you catch it right, see how there's can, a little yeah, a blue right catches there. Yeah. There's one over here too. The ice cubes are hollow, like Philip said, and sometimes the different liqueurs, if they're poured in separately, will get caught up in the crevice in the center of the ice cubes. Yeah. And that's when you get pretty colored it's dots just, throughout just, yeah, the drink. It's cute. <laughs> We agree. Anyway. We, we agree. Thank you, Yuzu. We think it's pretty, too. And also, this tastes really delicious. Mmm. Mmm. These are so good. Mm -hmm. Now, because usually we drink cocktails that are a lot boozier than this, and we don't rely on a lot of juice, except for citrus juice sometimes, but this, the coconut rum with the melon and the orange and the pineapple all together, this is a really tasty flavor combination. Island. It's a, a sort of pina colada-esque. Yes, uh, Chef Alexis is pointing out that it, it gets darker as it goes towards yeah. the bottom. Was, the blue curacao is actually heavier than the rest of the ingredients, so that's why when we poured it over the top, it starts sinking immediately down because it's it's just you know a thicker consistency than the other ingredients, and so it's heavier and it sinks. That's what puts on the show with the color dripping through. So I think this is super fun to do. It puts on a nice show and these taste supremely yummy. Mmm. Cooking with Ooh, Rick uh, is in the house. Hey Rick, great to see you. Thank you for coming out to see what we're up to this afternoon. Uh, these are supremely yummy. This cocktail is called the High Tide. Now, I don't know, this is a lovely green color. Is, is High Tide really this green? I guess it depends, well, it depends on the ocean. <laughs> If we're in the Caribbean, no, this would not be the color of high tide because that would be turquoise. Off the coast of San Francisco, maybe. Maybe, <laughs> depends on which beach you're at and what time of the day. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who weren't here earlier, let's just run back by what we did today. Philip took fresh curly leaf parsley and mixed it with several other ingredients, including walnuts, garlic, salt and pepper and olive oil parmesan. and parmesan cheese finely grated parmesan cheese and made this lovely lovely parsley pesto and we used it on uh oh did we eat all those already there's one one left let me show you one we uh philip made some french bread earlier let me go back to the split screen here really quick so everyone can see it a little bit better there we go so philip made french bread cut it into slices for crostini, toasted it in our June oven, and then slathered the top of it with the parsley pesto and then sprinkled on bacon lardon. This is so delicious. <laughs> we're gonna have to make more of these after we're done because I'm gonna need a whole plate of these to eat while we watch TV later. We also have to catch up on some of our favorite Spring YouTube Baking channels. Spring Baking Championship! Yeah, we're gonna watch that. <laughs> we've got several videos we've gotta watch on our favorite channels. So we're gonna definitely need more of these lovely little crostinis. These are so good. And then also, what else did we use the pesto for? It's a uh, pasta and chicken with pesto. So that was farfalle, which is bow tie pasta. And then the chicken you just sauteed, it was chicken breast that you cut up in chunks and then you sauteed it. 
it looks really good. Mm. And I've already tasted it. it I'm going to have one more piece of this pasta because there's a lot of pesto on this piece right mm. here. Mmm. so good. It is. This is really, really good. I was thinking I wasn't going to be that crazy about it because sometimes parsley can taste really grassy. This doesn't have that issue at all. I wasn't a pesto fan until I made my own. Yeah, well, <laughs> we've, had, we've had pesto before, mm. but it can be expensive. Mm. Okay, Cooking with Rick says, it looks killer, Philip. And mm. I agree with you, Rick. Philip did an awesome job. This pesto looks pretty, and it tastes mm. delicioso. Yeah. It is really super yummy. Mm. Okay, so that's how you make this happen. It's so easy. So if you have lots of parsley going on like we did, if you missed us earlier, this is what the parsley looked like when we started. Philip picked these branches earlier from our herb garden, which is growing in containers out on our balcony. And we'll tell you more about that in an upcoming episode. Some of you may have seen our episode about, um, about two months ago, I think it was, where we installed a portable greenhouse on our balcony. And we used to grow herbs without having a greenhouse. The problem was that the rabbits and squirrels and birds like the herbs just as much as we do. And so sometimes we go out in the morning to harvest stuff and it had already been harvested for Our us. first and, pot of herbs basically got eaten by critters. Yeah, it got eaten by critters. Let me start this second. So we started in more herbs and this time we put them inside of a greenhouse that you can't get to overnight. And this is the outcome. We get these lovely long branches of parsley and Philip clipped off, let me just show you. We just took the leaf parts from the end. So you want to get rid of the stem. So that took a little while. That was probably the most laborious part of this process was preparing the fresh parsley. But this is a great way to use, if you have a lot of herbs, this is a great way to use I, parsley. I, I did with scissors, which was easier. The first time I did it with a knife, but that's kind of hard. The scissors, yeah. you know, just hold it on the bottom, snip, 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 throw the stem away. Snip, snip, snip. Supremely easy and super delicious. You know, these Christinis are so, so good. So that's it. If you want to know how to, uh, what the ingredients are for this, the ratios and everything are right down in the description below where you're watching this live stream for both the parsley pesto and the high tide cocktail. And if you make either one or both of these, be sure and snap a picture with your phone, consider posting it on your Instagram account. And when you do tag us in your posts so we can check out what you've been up to. We'd love to see how this uh, pesto recipe or this cocktail recipe works out for you in your kitchen. And as you saw, for those of you who were here for the whole broadcast, this was very, very, very easy to put together. Like we said, the most laborious part was prepping the parsley <laughs> before we actually made the pesto. So, you know, you want to make sure you wash the fresh parsley really thoroughly, dry it off good, and then remove as much of the stems yeah. as possible. And then you're ready to start out. Uh, we used a total of two cups of parsley leaves, which was a lot of parsley. So I know we saw uh, another uh, YouTuber did a video recently. She had, it was Chef uh, Sheila from Spasmatic Chef Channel. She had a huge amount of basil left and it was starting to snow where she oh. lived. So Ooh. she had to get all the basil <laughs> harvested. And one of the best ways to use a big quantity of herbs is to do something like make a pesto. So that's what we've been doing with our parsley because the parsley plants outside got huge. It fills up like half of a 20 inch round container. Early parsley just grows really easily in lush. In our climate anyway. Yeah. You know, here in San Francisco, it's like summer in the winter and like winter in the summer. And the temperatures are all over the map. But even when the temperatures are nice, the sun goes away from like May till September and we live under the fog a lot. So that can be challenging to try to grow things that need sun. So thank you, Janine. Janine says, thank you guys. You're my favorite part of Tuesdays. That's a very nice thing to say. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your continued support, Janine. We're very fortunate to have so many lovely fans that come out to check out what we're up to every Tuesday afternoon. Now, speaking of Tuesday afternoons, next week, which was Tuesday, March 23rd, I have jury duty all next week. Yeah. So I'm going to be sitting downtown in the Superior Court twiddling my thumbs, waiting for something to happen. Hopefully it'll be over sooner rather than later. But if I do get selected to actually be on the jury, I of course will participate at the highest level. So the reason that I'm babbling about all this is there's a possibility that next Tuesday we won't be able to do a live because I won't be here. And also tomorrow you're having another surgical procedure 
And so he's going to be uh, back to soft foods for a week or two. Another, putting in the other implant. Yeah, well, he's he's getting this. One down here, one's going here, and then at some point I'll get actual teeth. Well, those of you who've kn who knew that we took a break a couple months ago, the first break that we've taken since we started our channel almost six years ago, was because uh, we needed to give you some downtime to recover. Both other mouth have been dealt with. He couldn't chew anything. Well, I was making him milkshakes, soup. smooth, yes. blended soup, he makes a great and cocktails. Soup. That's the, the only thing he could eat was blended soup, pudding, pudding, and cocktail ice cream. So starting tomorrow, I'll be making soup first thing in the morning. So we have a nice bowl or pot full of blended soup. So thank you very much, Sundays with Heart. Uh, Leanne says best w best wishes with your procedure. Thank you. And it'll be alright. Uh, parsley chimichurri. Ooh. Chef Alexis has nailed it. That's another good one. Ooh. So Chef Alexis, if you have a really good chimichurri recipe, I want to see it on your channel. He makes awesome food. He has a really good short today where it came out where he was showing some really fun stuff. So thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it, Chef Alexis. Um, Sunset wants to know, will you add to what you're growing in the greenhouse? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, actually, right now we have, we still have, that's actually overwintered from last year. We have parsley, sage, sage and oregano. And oregano. Yeah, right so now. we have actually a set of seeds that we bought uh, that we're going to be starting in the next week or so. So we're going to do uh, parsley, sage, and oregano again, as well as rosemary, and we definitely want some mint, mint. and we need some chives, chives, and probably a couple of other things. We have a... a set of that we ordered from amazon of 10 different herb seeds well, some basil too yeah some basil and i also think one of the uh, it's not really an herb it's we have some arugula seeds that's actually like you know a, a, a green leafy vegetable but it came as part of the herb kit that we bought so we're going to plant that too we'll see how it works well, out kind of peppery we've tried to grow lettuce here before like leaf lettuce and it really didn't do that great mm. so we'll try again and see what happens well we don't get a greenhouse the greenhouse, wow. we didn't get the greenhouse with the idea of growing things and having an artificially warm temperature. We got it to protect the plants from critters, birds and squirrels and raccoons and other little guys that like to run around our backyard. Because here in San Francisco, we live up on the side of a big hill over a very natural area that's a big ravine that's a park that's as unspoiled as it was back in the day before San Francisco was ever built up to what it is now. So there's all kinds of critters that live down in that ravine and they often come up to our property. So we had to do something to protect our herb crop and that's what led to getting the greenhouse on the balcony so we could close it up at night and we didn't have to worry about waking up to finding out that our herb garden was decimated because somebody had a midnight feast. I lost my rang per tree. Yeah, and that- Something uh, out of the bark off of it. And it was like sad. I love that tree. It fruited like year round. It was Lovely, amazing. Tart little round orange fruits. And they were like the kind of fun things that, you know, you can't, you don't really usually see rang per limes at the grocery store. And rang, rang per limes aren't even green. So you might, even if you did see them, you might not well, even know what really They're sour mandarins. And they're tiny. Yeah. They're like the size of a they're golf ball or smaller. Uh, uh, Kendra, or, yeah, Kendra. Okay, so, uh, okay, Sundays with Heart has got to go. Okay. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. It's always great to have you here. And let's see, uh, Sunset says, French creamed cauliflower soup with garlic toast is an option to the menu. I think that sounds really good. And we actually did make a creamed cauliflower that we were, when we were experimenting a couple of times to, as a substitution for mashed potatoes. Oh yeah, I made, I made cauliflower puree. You made cauliflower puree, which was actually pretty good. Um, I think we're gonna have to try cauliflower soup though. If you make with beet, you can get the, the colors. Oh <laughs> yes, yeah, we made beet soup and it was really delicious. The cauliflower, I think what I wanna do with it to get more flavor on it is roast it first. Yeah. And then make the soup out of it after the cauliflower has been roasted. But yeah, anything with garlic toast or hey, Pesto toast, parsley pesto toast, that would be so supremely delicious. So thank you, Yuzu. She's wishing you speedy recovery. Thank you, thank you. We really appreciate that. Have a good doctor. A very good doctor. And it took a while to find the right person to do this work, but you did. And this doctor is extremely competent and even calls. He calls up the, the night after the surgical procedures just to check to be sure Philip's okay. 
And one time they sent me flowers. I know. How cool is that? <laughs> well, they're making a fortune off of us, but it, it's really important to get this done because I want you to be as healthy as possible. I just want to be able to chew. I haven't had crispy bacon. I can have little bits of bacon, but I can't just chew on a big piece of bacon. No, he hasn't been able to have bacon no, for not. like three months. Um, other things that you can't, no. anyway, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, It'll be so it's going to be fine. What it's going to be okay. Thank you, brother. Love. Thank you for all your good wishes and kind thoughts. We really do appreciate it. It was really lovely when we took a break for a couple of weeks and we got so many kind messages and uh, texts. It was really great to have all that support because sometimes, you know, you get isolated and it's depressing because you're in pain and you don't feel well and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it really did help to have so many lovely messages coming in and so much positivity being sent our way. So thank you so much everyone for doing that. So we've shown you how to make parsley pesto, mm -hmm. an alternative to using basil. And instead of using pine nuts, Philip used walnuts. And this tastes delicious. I wanna make some more of these crostinis once we're done because I'm gonna sit on the couch over there and pig out on this stuff because it is so good. And we also made Dun, dun, dun. High, tide. High Tide Cocktail. This lovely green cocktail, as you saw, if you were here earlier, it was supremely easy to mix together, and it tastes yummy. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. These are so, so good. Uh, let's see. Yes. Oh, okay. Sunset is offering to send us the recipe for the French cream cauliflower soup. Ooh, thank yes. you. Oh, yes. I would love to have that. Uh, Sunset knows how to reach us already because we've been in touch several times before. Yeah. So we would really appreciate that and we will give it a try and then we'll definitely let you know how we like it because we, we, I love making big pots of food, especially soup, chili, like the pasta dish we did last week because I like, I like to cook, but I don't really necessarily want to have to cook every single day. So I like it when I can make a big pot of something. And then it's just in the Tupperware or a plastic container in the refrigerator. And all we have to do is put it in a bowl and heat it up. And voila, suddenly dinner. So this is very easy. You can keep this pesto in the refrigerator oh, for a week. couple of weeks, yeah. at least a couple of weeks, in a nice container with an airtight lid. So either a jar that screws on or a plastic container with a snap-on lid that fits really tight. Tupperware. Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me see. Uh... I want to make sure I said hello to everyone. Oh, thank you so much. We really appreciate that, Jill. She's sending healing vibes. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Jill's got a lot of fun projects on her plate. So if you haven't checked out the Yester Kitchen channel yet, be sure you head over there as soon as you can and see what she's up to. She's been making really yummy food. As you know, Yester Kitchen makes retro dishes from the past, from the 40s through the 80s, and just about every year in between. And it's really super fun. Jill's an awesome host. So we really, really appreciate that. Uh, Chef Alexis from the other side of the stove says, we should be playing Blondie's The Tide is High with these cocktails uh, yeah. called High Tide. If we wouldn't get sued for copyright infringement, we would play Bond Blondie while we're cooking. Okay, that's all we can use, only seven <laughs> seconds. Otherwise, YouTube, you know what they'll do? They'll send you a notice. There were lyrics from a copyrighted song in your video. You know, so you don't want that to happen. So thank you so much, Mona. She's wishing you the best. Thank you, Mona. And we thank you so much for joining us for our live today. So that's what we have for you today, yep. peeps. We really appreciate you being here with us. Parsley pesto, the ingredients are listed in the description right below where you've been watching this live stream, as are the ingredients for the high tide cocktail. High tide. And this one is a showstopper cocktail. It's fun to make in front of the guests because when you pour the blue curacao in and it runs through all the other colors, that's what makes this lovely green. Mmm. Mm -hmm. But you have to be careful with these babies. There's some booze in here, but there's also quite a bit of pineapple juice. So it really just tastes like a lovely fruit punch. Mm -hmm. It does not taste especially boozy at all. How about a nice Hawaiian punch? So it's going to be like a hurricane. If you drink a lot of them, they're going to sneak up on you. So thank you so much, Everything Shakes. We really appreciate you being here. Everything Shakes says everything looked awesome. We're so glad that that's true. And we hope you had a nice clear picture of what we were up to during this broadcast, sometimes things get a little wonky. There's the close up. It's pretty good. It looks pretty good. From our end anyway. From our end anyway, yeah. So thank you all for being here. We really appreciate you joining us this afternoon. So parsley pesto, give it a try. This is super yummy and it's very easy to do. 
And these high tide cocktails are also very easy to make and they're fun because it puts on a show mm. while it's unfolding. And then they taste really good while you're drinking them. So, mm. Mm -hmm. mm. thank you so much. We really appreciate that, Mr. Homeowner. Rob says the video looked great tonight. I'm not sure how we achieved it. We just did the best we could with what we had to work with. We've been running lots of speed tests on our internet connection to make sure that we're actually getting the connection that we're paying for because we have a very high end plan, which is quite expensive. And usually we get excellent results, but the last few weeks we've had some really tough broadcasts where everything was blurry and you couldn't really even tell. You know, Everyone's on the internet, you know, it yeah, fills up, it does. That happens sometimes. <laughs> So, and I want to thank you very much because the parsley pesto was Philip's idea and he engineered all the ingredients for today's presentation. So that made my life a lot easier this week. I had to set up the equipment, but I didn't have to do any cooking for this show. You did it all. So thank you so much for taking care of everything. I really appreciate it. And you made this lovely food. I can't wait to go sit down and eat some more of it. Yeah. So that's what we're heading to do, peeps. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. It's been great having you here today. And while uh, we may or may not be here next Tuesday, it depends on if I actually oh, have to serve on the jury. Yeah. If I do have to serve on the jury, we'll have a pre-recorded episode posted for you guys to look at so you, you won't miss us. We just might not be live. And if I don't get selected for the jury, then we'll be right here next Tuesday at 4 o'clock. So thank you again for being with us. We really appreciate it. All of you being here, all of our lovely friends, thank you for commenting, for asking questions, for clicking the like button. If you're not already a subscriber, be sure and click that red subscribe button. And if you click the bell symbol, you'll receive notices sent directly to your phone about half an hour before we're gonna go live, just as a reminder, just to let you know that we're gonna be here. But you don't have to wait for a reminder because we've been doing Tuesdays at 4 p.m. ever since the beginning of the year, and we're gonna continue with Tuesdays at 4 p.m unless we find a time slot that you all decide that you like better. So thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Parsley Thanks pesto, your words. high tide cocktail, love it. Okay, all right, peeps, we're gonna head out. It's time, we gotta put all this stuff away and put the kitchen back together and then it's time to sit down for another mm. cocktail and relax for a little while. So we hope you all have a great evening. Thank you so much, Mr. Homeowner. We appreciate it. Please hit the like button on your way out the door. That would be lovely. It really helps our channel grow. And thank you, Mr. Homeowner, for being our moderator this afternoon. He does an awesome job. We really appreciate that, Rob. Okay, everyone, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Sunset, Bobby Joe, Chef Alexis, Sonia, Jill, Yuzu, Rob, Terry, Ron, everything shakes. I did, I'm sure I missed a few people who were still here. But Mr. Blue, Sunset, let's see, let me go back up here and make sure, uh, Mona, yeah, and Janine, okay, all, we really appreciate all of you being here today. So, from San Francisco, California, I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. We're the Kitchen Queers, and remember, queer is not a bad word, it means unusual, extraordinary, and unique, all things we want to be. We'll see you next week. Thank you again for joining us, peeps. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, Bella, we love you.